Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're finishing out our chapter six on forces. And this is one of the last examples of, um, well, this is the last example of translational equilibrium. Um, we're just in the final home stretch right here and about to, to finish up with connected objects, but uh, we're still doing translational equilibrium right here. And uh, one thing you might recall with translational equilibrium is the assumption that the net force in all direction in all directions equals zero newtons. Okay, so it doesn't mean it's not moving, it just means it's not accelerating. Uh, but with this bag of closed pins right here, we can assume that it's not moving. It's attached to the clothesline, which is attached to the ground, and uh, inertially, uh, we can say it's, it's basically not accelerating, it's, and it's not even a, uh, in motion, it's at rest. Okay, so um, why is this bag of closed pins not sinking to the ground right there. Why is it not being accelerated to the ground because of its weight? Well, because it's being supported. There is some sort of upward component of this clothesline that is, that is supporting it. So that's what we're going to be solving for. We want to find out what the tension in the line is such that it creates an upward component to balance out the weight, the downward weight force of the clothespin bag. Right, now, one thing I want to point out is the fact that this is one single clothesline. All right, and so if this is all one line, it's going to have all the tension throughout. So um, there are actually two tension forces acting on this clothesline right here, but it's, they're both going to be equal to each other. All right, that's one thing I should also point out as well. All right, let's, uh, let's change one or two things here to kind of keep in following with what we've been talking about. We do have our downward <coughs> excuse me, weight force, but we're not going to call it W. Right? I mean, you can if you want. But what, what are we even calling it so that it is uh, easier to, to figure out what that is? Well, mg, right? The downward weight force is the mass times the acceleration of gravity. Okay, now if we look at this, um, first of all, do you expect it to be moving at all in the x direction? No, I don't either, right? Because there's nothing really causing it to move in the x direction, and we can assume that in the x direction um, everything is balanced out or in equilibrium. But in the y direction, we have some things going on. First of all, this downward weight force. Why is the clothesline not being pulled all the way down to the ground? Why is it not accelerating to the ground? Well, because there must be some sort of vertical component of those tension forces in the clothesline keeping it up. And there is. All right, so let's look, look on the right side right here. We're going to call this TY. All right, it's a pretty bad Y, but you get the idea. All right, and if that tension is at an angle, what is that angle, 3.5 degrees? If it's at an angle, it's going to have a y component, and it's going to have an x component. All right, we'll call that tx. If we know what one of those values is, and we know this angle right here, we can solve for that tension t. But look, there's not just one tension at some angle being applied to the closed pin bag, but there's two of them. So we must say that there are two TY forces acting upwards, and there are two TX forces, or X components of the tension, acting horizontally. Right Now, why is this thing not moving in the horizontal direction? Well, because these two TX forces balance out. And we can kind of see that, that they're going to be equal and opposite. So it's not moving horizontally. But it's not moving vertically because these two TY forces, that is, I should say the, the Y components of the tension forces, are acting in concert with each other to balance out the weight force. So we can say this. The net force, that's not the right color. Let's change to blue. The net force in the Y direction is zero newtons, right? And the net force in the Y direction can be described as what? Well, if we treat downwards as negative, we're going to have a negative mg, right? And you know what? I'll keep that red just so you kind of are able to pick that out. mg is acting downwards. But what's acting upwards? We've got two ty components of the tension forces acting upwards. So you could write ty plus ty. I'm just going to make it easy on us and just do two ty. That is what's balancing out the downward weight force of the clothespin bag, mg. Okay? 
So I'm going to actually move down to the bottom right here where I have some more space. And uh, we want to solve for what the tension is in one of these lines here, right? Well, if we can find what one of these Ty's is, uh, or R, uh, and we know this angle, we should easily be able to solve for what T is. <clears throat> so, if both of these statements are true, if the net force in the y direction is zero, and the net force component-wise can be described as the upward forces minus the downward forces, then we can say this. 2Ty minus mg, sorry it's not red, equals zero newtons. If we solve for Ty, we'll add the mg to the other side, right? And then we're going to divide by 2. So to solve for Ty, it's going to be mg divided by 2. What is our mg? What is our actual weight for? So we know the mass of the bag, and we know what g is. So that's going to be what's, what? The 1.84 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, right? Divided by 2. And that's going to, going to give us our Ty force. What is that? 1.84 times 9.81 divided by 2. 19, or sorry, 9. 9.0 newtons. Okay? Let's dot a line box that. That's not our final answer, but that's the key to getting our final answer. All right? So we want to solve for T, just the tension T. We can look at one of the two sides. Both of the T's are going to be the same thing. So how do we solve for T? All right, well, we have the vertical, which really winds up being kind of the, the opposite side of this angle right here. We have the opposite, and we want to solve for the hypotenuse. So what, so what trig function do we use? We use cosine, right? Cosine, or sorry, not cosine, I'm sorry, sine. Sine of, what's that angle? 3.5 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse, right? Equals Ty over the tension T. Now, we only have to do this for the one side because whatever the tension T is is going to be the same on the other side. So let's solve for T. T equals Ty over sine 3.5 degrees, right? We bring the T up and we bring the divide, bring the three point, sine 3.5 degrees down. And I ran out of space, but I have a special, I have a special trick up my sleeve. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, and uh, so we can easily solve for T. So T is going to be, what's our Ty? 9.0 newtons divided by the sine of 3.5 degrees. You know, no matter how much space I make for myself, I always wind up running out of it. Oh, well. Uh, 9.0 divided by sine 3.5. What do you get? I get 147.4 that doesn't look like a 7, it looks like a 2. 147.4 newtons, and that is what our tension is. Now keep in mind, that tension is in both sides of this. So 147 newtons this way, and 147 newtons that way. The Y components of which add up to balance out this downward weight force right here. But if you think about that, look, what that, that angle, the T is being exerted at is a pretty shallow angle right there. So you got to pull pretty hard, 147 newtons. That's, uh, I don't know, that's like 35 pounds maybe, all right? Just to barely get enough of this teeny tiny Y component of it to balance that out. So most of the force of this is, is exerted in the X direction. A teeny tiny bit of it is in the Y. That's why your, your tension has to be so, so great because this is such a shallow angle right here. So anyway, that is a tension in our strings, and that is translational equilibrium. Remember, the assumption is that the net force in, you might say, all directions equals zero newtons. You sum up your y directions and your x directions independently, and you can find out what the tension is or, or the forces are in any direction. So I hope that helps. That's example 613, and that's the last example we'll do in translational equilibrium. If you have any questions, please make sure you come see me. But for the meantime, Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.